In this module, we'll unravel the power of ratio analysis, a tool wielded by the financial maestros to decipher the intricate dance of numbers within a company's financial statements. Ratio analysis, as the name suggests, involves dissecting various elements of financial information in a company's statements. This isn't just number crunching. It's a strategic endeavor to unveil the nuanced facets of a business, from its profitability and liquidity to its overall solvency. But who benefits most from this numerical ballet? External analysts take center stage, utilizing current and past financial statements as their script to discern a company's financial performance trends. So why is this analysis vital? The upcoming module will unveil the secrets of utilizing ratio analysis, guiding you through its application and deciphering the crucial interpretations. Let's set the stage by understanding how ratios can be our financial compass. Ratio analysis isn't just about numbers, it's about context. We can use it to compare a company's financial performance with similar firms in the industry illuminating its position in the market. This isn't a mere exercise. It's a strategic move to identify market gaps, trends, and weaknesses, paving the way for informed decisions to enhance the company's market standing. Numbers can tell a story, especially when viewed over time. Establishing trends in financial performance helps predict future trajectories and foresee any potential turbulence. It's like reading the financial crystal ball, providing insights that a single reporting period might miss. It's also not just about having assets. It's about using them wisely. Financial ratios become the Sherlock Holmes of management, deducing the efficiency in handling assets and liabilities. Inefficient use results in unnecessary expenses, and ratios become the magnifying glass that reveals where improvements can be made. Now, let's peek into the wizardry of ratio calculation in Excel. Financial ratios, the building blocks of ratio analysis, are categorized into several components. Starting off with liquidity ratios, these measure a company's ability to meet short-term debt obligations using its current assets. Think of it as the company's financial flexibility. Can it easily convert assets into cash when needed? Liquidity ratios include the quick ratio, cash ratio, and current ratio. Then we have the solvency ratios. The long-term financial viability of a company is under the microscope here. How does its debt stack up against assets, equity, or annual earnings? Important solvency ratios include debt to capital, debt ratio, interest coverage, and equity multiplier. Now let's talk about the moolah. How well is the business turning investments into profits? Profitability ratios like return on equity, return on assets, profit margin, gross margin, and return on capital employed come into play here. Imagine a business as a well-oiled machine. Efficiency ratios measure how well it's using its assets and liabilities to generate sales and profits. Asset turnover, inventory turnover, payables turnover, and receivables turnover are metrics that fine-tune this machine. Can the business comfortably meet its debt and obligations? Coverage ratios provide the answer. Debt coverage, interest coverage, fixed charge coverage, and EBITDA coverage offer insights into the financial health of a business. For investors seeking crystal ball insights, market prospect ratios are the oracle. They help predict potential earnings from investments through indicators like dividend yield, earnings per share, price to earnings ratio, 
and dividend payout ratio. But why should numbers be bland when they can be vibrant? Ratio analysis isn't just about financial scrutiny. It's a journey into understanding the heartbeat of a company. It's an art as much as it is science. A symphony of numbers that, when played right, creates a harmonious financial narrative. Now, let's put theory into practice by applying the concepts of ratio analysis to a real-life scenario. Consider the case of San Mart, a thriving company in the culinary landscape. We explore how various ratios unveil different aspects of its financial health. The quick ratio provides a snapshot of San Mart's ability to cover its short-term obligations without relying on inventory. A quick ratio above 1 suggests a healthy liquidity position. Going a step further, the cash ratio focuses solely on Sanmart's ability to cover short-term liabilities with its available cash. A ratio close to 1 implies a robust ability to meet immediate obligations. Taking a broader view, the current ratio considers all current assets. A ratio above 2 indicates Sanmart has more than enough assets to cover its short-term liabilities. By dissecting these liquidity ratios, we gain insights into Sanmart's capacity to handle its immediate financial responsibilities. Now let's look at some solvency ratios. The debt-to-capital ratio assesses the proportion of Sanmart's financing that comes from debt. A lower ratio signifies a healthier balance between debt and equity. The interest coverage ratio delves into Sanmart's ability to cover its interest expenses with its earnings. A higher ratio indicates greater financial stability. The equity multiplier scrutinizes the relationship between assets and equity. A lower multiplier implies less reliance on debt for financing. Through solvency ratios, we gauge Sanmart's long-term financial viability and its ability to weather economic storms. Let's take a look at some profitability ratios now. The return on equity measures the profitability of Sanmart relative to its equity. A higher ROE suggests efficient utilization of equity capital. Examining Sanmart's profit margin reveals the percentage of revenue that translates into profit. A widening margin signifies improved profitability. Focusing on the gross profit margin sheds light on Sanmart's ability to generate profits from its core operation. Switching focus to the efficiency ratios, the asset turnover ratio evaluates how efficiently Sanmart utilizes its assets to generate sales. A higher ratio signifies effective asset management. The inventory turnover ratio unveils how quickly Sanmart sells its inventory. A higher turnover indicates sufficient inventory management. By examining how swiftly Sanmart collects on its receivables, this ratio showcases its efficiency in managing credit. By infusing these numbers into our case study, we bridge the gap between theory and practical application, offering a glimpse into how ratio analysis can be a powerful tool for decoding a company's financial story. The magic of ratio analysis isn't confined to numbers alone. It's about using these insights to inform decision-making identify areas for improvement, and enhance a company's financial ballet. As we wrap up this module, remember that ratio analysis isn't just a tool. It's your financial Sherlock Holmes, unraveling mysteries and guiding you toward financial prosperity. Welcome back to the second part of our enlightening journey through ratio analysis. In this module, we will not only explore the theoretical aspects, but delve into the practical applications using Excel. The mission is to understand how to calculate these ratios and decipher the numbers to draw insightful conclusions about a company's financial well-being.
We are embarking on this analytical expedition by revisiting the comprehensive financial statements for San Mart. We have the balance sheet, the income statement, and moving to the right, the cash flow statement from 2018 through 2022. Let's put our knowledge of formulas and linkages into action to witness the power of ratio analysis in financial decision making. If I move over to the right, you will see a table where we have calculated several ratios. We have a number of profitability ratios, liquidity ratios, efficiency ratios, and so on. Now let's discuss some of these ratios, starting off with the net revenue growth. Calculating the year-over-year -year increase in net revenue isn't just about numbers. It's about understanding the trajectory of Sanmart's growth. We have positive percentage values from 2019 through 2022. Remember, 2018 is the first year. And if we want to calculate growth, it will always start with 2019, taking the number for 2018 as the beginning number. So looking at these numbers, we see that it's a positive percentage, which indicates expansion. If we had any negative numbers, it would indicate contraction. This insight aids in crafting growth strategies. If I look at the net revenue growth of 20% in 2020, we can have a quick look at the formula. It's just taking the, the ending value of 1.617 and then subtracting the beginning value of 1.347 million and then dividing it by the beginning value of 1.347 again. If the formula returns an error, or if one of these cells is blank, it's going to return a zero. That's what the if error formula stands for. Otherwise, it's just a simple formula by taking just two numbers, the ending value and the beginning value. As revenue expands, so does the cost of doing business. Analyzing the growth and cost of sales provides a profound understanding of the scalability of Sanmart's operations. This is a pivotal metric for strategic decision making. COGS, or the cost of goods sold growth, has also grown in line with our revenue growth. So even though Sanmart has been able to grow its revenue, its COGS has grown by the same percentage each and every year. The management can look into reducing the COGS growth percentage so that some of the revenue growth hits the bottom line or the net earnings. Currently, all the revenue growth is being absorbed by the COGS growth. The gross profit margin serves as a compass, guiding us through the profitability landscape. This ratio reveals percentage of revenue retained after covering the cost of goods sold. Higher percentages indicate effective cost management, a crucial aspect of sustainable growth. As we just discussed, as the net revenue growth is being absorbed in its entirety by the COGS growth, the gross profit margin numbers are flat at 71.4, which is quite healthy. But in order to further increase its gross profit margins, the management might look into reducing its cost of goods sold. Venturing deeper, into the income statement, the operating profit margin sheds light on Sanmart's ability to manage operating expenses efficiently. This insight is pivotal for operational excellence and maintaining a healthy bottom line. We do see a slight increase from 19.5% in 2019 to 20.5% 20 in 2020, and then it increases again by a couple of percentage points. And then it ends 2022 with an operating profit margin of 24.3%. Having a look at the operating profit margin, it seems as if the company is headed in the right direction. Finally, taking a look at the net profit margin, the net profit margin considers all costs, including taxes and interest. It unveils how much of each dollar Earn translates into net profit, offering a holistic view of Sanmart's overall financial efficiency. The net profit margin is headed in the same direction as the operating profit margin. In the years where the operating profit margin has increased, we see an associated similar increase in the net profit margin numbers. 
As we transition to liquidity ratios, we are essentially donning the captain's hat, navigating Sanmar through the short-term financial waters. Let's discuss a few liquidity ratios now, starting off with the current ratio. This acts as a financial life buoy, indicating whether Sanmart has sufficient liquid assets to cover short-term debts. Sanmart's current ratio is exceptional. The rule of thumb is if the ratio is above one, it suggests financial health. But understanding the nuances of this ratio is crucial for strategic planning. Sometimes it's not just about having assets. It's about having the right kind of assets. The asset test ratio considers only the most liquid assets. So it's more restrictive than the current ratio. And that's why the asset test ratio is lower for every year as when we compare it to the current ratio numbers. Let's delve into some of the efficiency ratios now. Efficiency in collecting receivables is paramount for healthy cash flow. The receivables turnover ratio not only measures efficiency, but also offers insights into credit policies. In order to further improve the receivables turnover ratio, especially in 2022, where it dipped, the management needs to look into the credit policies of the company and uncover areas for improvement and strategic adjustments. As we step into the realm of solvency ratios, the debt to equity ratio takes center stage. This ratio is often viewed as a financial tightrope, unveiling Sanmart's financing structure. A low ratio of 8% in 2020 and 6.4% in 2021 implies a healthier balance between debt and equity, which is crucial for long term stability and sustainable growth. What's more, Sanmart even reduced its debt to equity ratio further to 4.7%. All in all, it seems as if Sanmart is headed in the right direction when it comes to profitability. Its net profit margin has increased on an year over year basis. However, it can revisit its cost of goods sold growth and reduce its expenses to further enhance its profitability. The company doesn't seem to have any issues when it comes to liquidity. It is sufficiently liquid and financially healthy. On the efficiency side, there has been a dip in the receivables turnover ratio, and the company might need to revisit its credit policies. On the leverage side, companies seem to have a slightly riskier profile with more debt in its capital structure, but it has been making strides towards improving its credit structure. And based on the 2022 numbers, it seems as if Sanmart is headed in the right direction. By adding practical dimensions to our ratio analysis, we not only decipher the financial story of Sanmart, but also equip ourselves with valuable tools for financial decision making. In the upcoming modules, we'll continue to elevate our understanding by exploring advanced concepts and delving into real world case studies to fortify our analytical skills. Until then, Keep exploring and happy analyzing. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.